totally a race against time right now because the sun is going down. So if I talk really, really fast, I'm sorry. I only have like 20 minutes to film this, so we gotta go quickly, okay? Bear with me, people. Also, when I rant, I just kind of keep going, so that could also be a reason why I'm talking way too fast. Okay, okay. <laughs> Hey guys, it's Jay, and today I am here with my part two of my bookish pet peeves video. I uploaded my part one a while ago, and you all seem to like it, so, you know, it's pretty easy to find things that bother me, so your girl is here with another ten. So without further ado, let us get started. Pet peeve number one is when books that are like movie tie-in books put pictures in the middle of the book. If I wanted to go see the movie, I would have gone seen the movie. I don't need those little pictures in the middle of a chapter. Like, if you're gonna put them in, fine. But wait until the end of a chapter, not in the dang middle of one. Like, I'm like, oh, so much suspense, this is great, oh my god, and then it's like, okay, now you're showing me pictures and spoiling everything for me. It's fine. <laughs> it's not fine. Number two is when the actors in a movie or TV show based off of a book are shown to you before you've read the book. Okay, okay. And now that character is forever ingrained in your mind. For example, Clary from the Mortal Instruments Shadowhunters TV series. I hadn't read the books before I saw the like advertisements for that show. Now, Clary is forever that actress in my mind. Does Clary look like that? No, she doesn't. She looks completely different from what I imagined and it annoys me so much. Same with Triss and Shailene Woodley, is that her name? Whatever the actress's name. That's forever Triss now and I don't want her to look like that. She doesn't look like that and it just drives me crazy. Number three is when a book series gives no indication of what number the book is in that series. So I pick up a book and I'm like, oh, this sounds really cool. It'd be super interesting. And then it turns out to be like number eight in a series because like, why don't we put the numbers on the spine or something or like on the front of the book be like book five in the whatever series. But no, some books don't do that. So I end up buying the like 20 millionth book in a series. And then I'm like, well, now I have to go find the first 20 million books in this series before I can read this one. Do you know how annoying that is? Real annoying, really annoying. Which leads me to number four. If you're gonna have a list of all the books in a series in like the front page of your book, at least put them in order so I know which one comes before the next one. I hate it when books like mix them up. Like why? Why would you not just put it in order? This is logical sense to me, but apparently not to other people. But it's fine. It's still not fine. Number five. Okay, number five. When paperbacks aren't floppy, so you have to read the book but you have to read it like this, so you don't crack the spine. Like if they're floppy, they just they just flop. And you can just sit there and just read happily without cracking the spine because I don't like cracked spines. I just, I, I can't with the cracked spines. So if a book is not floppy, I'm not gonna crack your spine. So I have to sit there like an idiot and try to read your book without cracking the spine. And then I just look stupid and then I'm not a happy J. It's just annoying. Make floppy paperbacks, people. Come on. Number six is really super long paragraphs or chapters. Like, for example, the Mortal Instruments series, those chapters are like 40 pages each. I have the attention span of like a goldfish, okay? I cannot pay attention to a chapter that long. I need to be able to like take breaks in between and go like eat something or just do anything other than read 40 pages of a chapter in one sitting. I can't do that and therefore it drives me crazy. Number seven is when you go to the library and you borrow a book. You're very excited about this book, obviously, because you borrowed it, so you obviously want to read it. And then you're just having a nice old grand time reading your book, and then there's like crumbs or like boogers or something disgusting stuck in the pages. Like, do people not respect their books anymore? I'm just wondering, like, what, what are you doing just sitting there picking your nose and wiping it on the book? No, don't do that. Like, I understand if you're like a five-year-old child doing that, but like the books that I take out from the library are not books that five-year-old children read. So like, keep your boogers and your food to yourself. Thank you. Number eight is when publishers change the book covers midway through a series. Why do you do this? Why? Because I just want pretty matching books. So the fact that you are sitting there and changing the covers halfway through means that I have to go find the new covers to the first books of the series so that they can all match. Why? Why? I don't like it. Can we all just keep a consistent cover for an entire series and then like maybe a few years later then change the cover so I don't feel as bad? about having to buy more books. Number nine is the price of books in Canada. Honestly, I think the price of books 
in Canada is just ridiculous. Like a hardcover book is like around $30. Why? A book is not worth $30. I'm sorry, I don't care how good the book is, it could be the freaking best book ever written, but it is probably not worth $30. The fact that I can go to a store and get that exact same book for $1.95, yes, one of those exists in my hometown, it's the best place in the entire world. The fact that I can get that for $1.95, but you're charging me $30 at Chapters or Indigo or like Barnes and Nobles, that is not cool, man. Not cool. It is not worth that much money, and your girl is a starving student. She doesn't have the money to spend $30 on a book. $1.95, yes, that is reasonable. <laughs> also probably extremely cheap, but the point is, books should not be as expensive as they are, okay? Pet peeve, man. Pet peeve. Finally, pet peeve number 10 is books that are different sizes. I understand all books are unique in their own way, blah, 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 diversity, but can we just have one universal size for books? Because when they are different sizes, they just look so stupid on your shelves. Like, honestly, like my Louise Renison books, one of the books in the series is like this big, and then the other two are this big. So it's like I have one mini tiny book, and then two giant books, but they're the same series. Like, why? I don't understand. I don't like it. I just want all my books to line up perfectly and prettily on my shelves. Is prettily a word? It is now, okay? <sighs> Alright guys, so those were my 10 pet peeves part 2. If you guys want to see a third part, I'm sure I can come up with 10 more pet peeves of mine because I apparently have a lot of them. So I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!